Hi there, have you ever had an experience where somebody comes into a room and their energy is all crazy? They're, uh, maybe they're stressed, maybe they're anxious, and you find that, oh my gosh, after they left, you too feel the same sort of energy that they had? Well, if so, friend, then this video's for you. Hi there, my name is Morgan Risden, and I'm the creator of Center Studio, where I teach people skills to feel more comfortable more often. Now, if you haven't already, friend, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, you hit that notification bell. That way, anytime I make a video like this, you'll be the first to know about it. So today's video, I wanted to piggyback off of last week's video where I talked about all things mirror neurons and the way in which we are influenced or impacted when we're interacting with other people. So if you think about like going to a live event and they have an MC who's, you know, getting the audience all riled up and excited, and you start to feel you know pumped and ready to go that my friend is an example of your mirror neurons at work and today i wanted to talk about what we can do when it's negatively impacted meaning when somebody is talking to you maybe a coworker comes in and they're all stressed and anxious maybe a roommate or a partner and you find like after they leave you are still feeling the residual effects of that right you still have this sort of like anxiety now that wasn't there before or the stress that you don't remember having before they came in and so i wanted to talk about um, that with you today because i think sometimes when we don't know that's happening then we fall into to patterns where we're just sort of going about our day-to-day -day life and reacting to all of these situations and not realizing like oh i could actually control how i feel more if i knew how other people were influencing me in how i feel so the first thing is a tale off of last week, which is, again, just becoming more aware of that. Because if you don't know what's happening, you can't change it, right? That's, I think, the case for most things in life. If you don't know if something is happening, you can't change it. So we really want to wake up our awareness and our consciousness like, oh, this is my mirror neurons. Like, this is happening right now. So maybe somebody comes in or maybe you get a call from somebody and you feel like this is happening name it in your head like consciously really say it out loud to yourself like this is my mirror neurons at work so that you can start to identify when it's happening the second thing i'm going to suggest is that you practice your exhale so in alexander technique we're always looking at the breath out not the breath necessarily in which i know is counterintuitive and a lot of people are taught to take deep breaths but again if you're here watching this video chances are you're breathing so You've already got air in you, friend. So what we like to think of, about is really, can I let my air out? Do I have room to exhale any sort of residual or old air in there so that my next inhalation in is a little bit deeper and a little bit fuller? So in essence, you get to the deep breath. It's just the how you get there that's a little bit different. And if you're anything like me in a stressful situation, you'll find one of two things is happening. You're either holding your breath or maybe you're taking those shallow little breaths like trying to almost catch your breath again even though you already have air so by focusing your attention on the exhale out you're then allowing yourself to naturally let that reflexive breath back in and it's deeper thus keeping you a little bit calmer so again you'll find that you're either probably holding your breath taking shallow breaths but you again give yourself an opportunity to calm your nervous system down by inviting this nice smooth breath back into your um, to your body so again lips close air comes in and then you breathe and again it doesn't have to look silly i wouldn't necessarily if somebody came into me, to my space and started like barking at me i wouldn't necessarily look at them and go <sighs> i would just let it out slowly okay okay you're barking you know i wouldn't make it too obvious so uh, you know <laughs> you don't have to be silly and goofy about it. it doesn't have to be overt it's a small exhale and again the more you practice it you'll get better at it okay then the next thing i'm going to suggest is that you do a body scan so you scan yourself from the top of your head all the way down to the bottom of the soles of your feet and you look for where am i holding <laughs> where is there tension where is there stress or strain if you find that there's pain or discomfort, that can often be a great clue into where you're feeling the tension. Um, but just see if you can notice where in my body is it feeling tight. This person came in and now my shoulders are up to my ears. Okay, maybe your jaw is starting to uh, clench. Maybe you find that your palms have become little fists. 
right? Just notice where in my body am I starting to tighten and then follow that, my friend, with letting that go. So, oh, I'm pulling my shoulders up to my ears. Okay, I'm gonna let them go as I'm breathing out. I'm listening to this person, <laughs> okay? And then maybe you find that your fingers are clenching. You go, okay, I'm gonna open up my palms. Okay, my hands are nice and relaxed. I'm putting them on my desk. And then again, you're still in conversation with this individual. And I recognize that this can sort of be a tall order because you're multitasking, right? You're listening to somebody and you're trying to pay attention to your body. So it is going to require a lot of practice. And the more you practice, the better you're gonna get. I guarantee it. So if you say to me now, this might be a point at which you're watching this video and you say, but I don't know how to let go of tension, Morgan. That's why I'm watching your videos, okay? And if that's the case, might I suggest the following, okay? Let's say that you notice your shoulders are tight and you say, I don't know how to let them go because they're just tight. If you can, without hurting yourself, can you tighten them more and then let them go? Okay, so I know which direction, okay, is letting go. Sometimes with my students, I'll suggest tighten a little bit more so that you can get the experience of releasing and then release a little bit more. So let's say the same thing is true for, uh, maybe you feel your hips are tight. Can you, hit, can you tighten your hips even more? and then let them go and then let them go. Can you notice that your jaw is clenched? Maybe tighten a little bit more and then let that go. So you can practice this until you get more um, familiar with what this idea of releasing tension in your body feels like and means to you. And again, I'm gonna remind you that if you're somebody who experiences a lot of stress, a lot of tension in your everyday life, friend, chances are that's what your body is good at. Okay, it's not necessarily, it doesn't make us feel good, but it's probably that you have so much practice unconsciously tightening and holding that that's what your body is used to. That's what's familiar to you. And so to practice this other end of the spectrum where we're releasing tension, where we're letting go of stuff, we need to exercise those muscles and get used to what is that like. And so have some patience, give yourself a little bit of grace that, okay, I don't know how to do it yet, but that doesn't mean I throw in the towel. It just means I need more practice. I need to get a little bit better at it. And so you can break these steps up however is best for you. Practicing just identifying, oh, mirror neurons at work, practicing exhaling your breath, or even just paying attention to where the stress is in your body and letting it go. And all of these things will soon add up to something where you feel like, oh, I'm not so easily triggered by that individual, or I feel like there's a shift that's been happening, okay? That can also happen as soon as you start practicing these things more often. Two things I'm gonna tell you to keep in mind. One is, let's not practice in high stakes situations, as I like to call them, okay? Meaning, let's not practice with your boss or in the middle of a conference that you're presenting to you know, 400 people, let's, practice in situations where you're with loved ones, you're with family, friends, people who know you, um, so that you feel like you can take the time to explore these ideas in a situation where the stakes are a little bit lower, right? Your livelihood is not at stake, so to speak. So that you can pause and interrupt your automatic reactions and choose a little bit better responses and just exercise those muscles, okay? So start where the stakes are a little bit lower. And then the other thing that I'm gonna leave you with today is the idea that whenever somebody comes into your world, into your space with any energy that you don't really care for, I'm gonna ask you to ask the following question of yourself. Do I have any choices here? Okay, and what I mean by that is that sometimes people will come in at you and they're just barking, let's say, bark, 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 and then you're just automatically reacting because that's your habitual um, you know, response to that situation is that you just start to go into that fight or flight mode and you're, you know, your body is you know, reacting to the situation. Do you have any, any choices in that situation where you could say, you know what, um, actually I can't talk to you right now because the energy that you're bringing at me you know, with this conversation is not conducive for a good conversation. I feel like I'm gonna get defensive and I'm probably just gonna start yelling and getting upset. So maybe we can calm down, we can circle back around in a bit um, after you've calmed down and we can revisit because I'm happy to talk to you about the following X, Y, Z, right? So that you can sort of start to create the boundaries that you need in your world so that people know how they should be talking to you how, um, how you are willing to accept dialogue and conversation into your life. 
um, you know, really to, to be able to better respond to situations because otherwise we're always reacting and we're not really in the driver's seat choosing, right? We're not choosing how to respond. So for example, if my children are crying and screaming, I might suggest to them, okay, go into the other room. I'm going to have you take a couple breaths and when you're ready, you're going to come back out and then we're going to talk about this. You know, because I don't want to talk with a crying four-year-old uh, who's screaming about something um, that's not that important in my opinion, right? So again, just creating the situation so that people know how to interact with you and that you can start to have more control over the boundaries, um, you know, with regard to your relationships, how people are communicating and how people are interacting with you. Okay, friend? If you haven't already, I hope that you will consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. You can hit the like and the share button. And of course, you're always welcome to leave comments below. If you do, I'll probably be looking at those comments. I hope to dive deeper into this topic, maybe even with some like real life examples in the future, just because I think it's really helpful to, to look at, at examples of, hey, this is happening. What could I do in this situation and kind of talk through it? So that's a hope I have for future videos. So you can, of course, include information below if you'd like me to pull from that. Otherwise, until next time, friends, take care. Ciao.